Welcome back, social and political commentator Jasmine Kanick, and also attorney and co-author of Encounters with Police, A Black Man's Guide to Survival, Eric Broyles. Eric, thank you both for coming in. One of, one, of, one of the things that really has been trending now on social media, part of the narrative and the conversation, is talking about the African-American community and people saying, we need to talk to our men out there and how to comply. They're using the words to comply with officers. What would you say to that? Well, in my book, I talk about complying now and then contesting later. Mm -hmm. There's a proper place and forum to engage in a fight with a police officer. It's never on the spot. I'm going to have to say, first of all, it's not just men, it's women, too. We've seen a lot of instances right. where black women, women, period, are the victims in these situations. And it, this particular video even goes to show that even when you do comply, you can still be the victim. And I think that's what's really scary for a lot of people. You're told to get your license, you're told to get your registration, and you still end up getting shot. I think we're looking at perhaps two different shootings, two different incidents that led up to him because the case in Louisiana was a call of a man with a gun. Yes. So I'm, I'm wondering, Eric, you wrote your book because of these different police shootings. Tell us more about why you wrote the book. Yeah, well, I wrote the book uh, to, one, give uh, a set of tools, in particular to African-American males, on how to deal in a police encounter. And one of the things that I concede in my speeches across the country, that even if you do everything that I say in this book correctly, you still could end up uh, dead, unfortunately. And I just want to point out, you wrote this with a retired police officer. Yes, I did. I wrote it with my best friend who's a police officer. Yes. Is it, is it not offensive or <laughs> frustrating to think that we have to create almost a, it, it, does it seemingly a different set of rules for how exactly. an African-American person must react to an officer versus another person? Absolutely. I was pulled over two months ago for having two-day-old tags, and I had to say at the top of my lungs, I'm reaching in my glove compartment. The officer says, ma'am, you don't need to do that. I said, yes, I do, and this is an example of why. I, it's frustrating that we have conversations in the black community about how we have to talk to police officers. What are the conversations going on in police departments about how they talk to us? Mm -hmm. It's a two-way street. And, Eric, you talk about there needs to be on both sides, some Absolutely. issues that have to be looked at yeah, there's, for the this departments. Is, this is shared responsibility. It's no, no one side is going to solve this problem. It takes police departments uh, in their training, in their hiring uh, of, of officers. It takes people in the community, and it takes the political process as well. So this is, there's no one solution to this problem. Everybody has, to, has a responsibility in fixing it. But you talk about the frustrations here uh, that the African-American community might have. Uh, president, the president even brought up these statistics, 30% of African Americans more likely to be pulled over, three times more likely to be searched. But knowing that, going into a situation like that, uh, the frustrations start to boil up, people get indignant, defiant even, and this can lead to an even worse situation. At this point, I, I know I tweeted out this morning that I felt like our country needed like national grief, like a, we needed a day of grief counselors after looking at two videos in pretty much 24 hours. I mean, it's very sad just as, as a community having to go online or getting these tweets and seeing things on social media where you're seeing people die. The, this isn't the movies. This isn't television. You know that what you just saw was reality. And, and our reality is driving back from here. I could get pulled over and find myself in a similar situation. Let's um, look at the fact that we don't know what happened leading up to both of these incidents because there were not cameras rolling and both to show us the video. I believe there are cameras on the Louisiana case, so we haven't seen those yet. Um, Eric, when it comes to um, the African-American community, which your book is, uh, is addressed to, how do they respond? The police come up for whatever reason, whatever scenario, how do you want people to respond? Well, in the book, I go through a list of, of things that uh, people should do. You should uh, be transparent. Turn on your lights. Put in your hands. Car. Turn on turn on the light interior light of your car. Put your hands on your ste steering wheel. Over communicate with the officer. Right. Over communicate. Actually, ask permission. One of the things I talk about in the book is asking permission prior to making a move. I know it seems like groveling, but it does. It, I, I know it does. Your alternative is you know, is, is that you can end up well, mm -hmm. dead people, because you don't know what the officer is doing either. You don't know if the officer is searching for a murder suspect. That's why, that's why you have to sometimes err on the side of giving them the benefit of the doubt because you don't know what work they're doing. Because you write about time. in your book that you don't know the officer's mindset no. and it could be that they're really looking for some kind of 
serious suspect. Absolutely. Now, that's not to excuse unprofessional behavior, and I think it, from what I know of these two instances, it's certainly that at, at a minimum. You talk about the mindset uh, of the officer. One of the things that we look at the, we look at the video of what happened there in Minnesota, uh, the officer says a few times, I told him not to reach for it. I told him to get his hands off. So almost implying already uh, that he didn't comply with my orders. And there really was almost a sense of fear uh, within this officer, and that's the reason why how he uh, reacted the way he did. I don't know about all that. I know that I heard his girlfriend say he reached for his license like the officer told him to do. I have seen situations where officers have told people to do something. They start to do it, and all kinds of hell breaks loose. So I, I don't know. I, again, you know, I wasn't there, but based off of her video, she is pretty clear that he was reaching for his license. They were complying. They pulled over. It was a busted tail light. They let the officer know that he had a gun, that he had a permit to have that gun. Um, so all of this had transpired before that shooting happened, and still he got shot. Well, the investigation will play out as to the officer's perspective as well as to what he thought happened leading up to that. Um, I want to thank you both for coming on. Eric, you're going to stick around and do a Facebook chat with me. I am. A good long half hour. Yes. So we can talk about this. If you go to my official Facebook page, we can um, answer a lot of your questions because there's a lot to talk about, right? Yes. Right. Eric, thank you so much. Jasmine, great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.